Galatians chapter 5. We're kicking off a brand new series today called Vibe. Now, Vibe can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. It can mean the mood that you're in. It can even mean the clothes that you have on. Um, Some would even say it's what happens when you dance to your favorite music. Or Another definition of the word Vibe is the impression that you give to others. So for the sake of this series, here's what we're going to call Vibe. The impression other people pick up from you. All right, look at your neighbor and ask them, what's your vibe? What's your vibe? If you're new here to the avenue, it's a talk back church. It, you know, people talk back and say amen. Just don't cuss at me, all right? And we may have security. Take you up out of here, all right? What's your vibe? Galatians 5, 16 through 24. Y'all going to help me preach today? Yeah. Come on, avenue, you going to help me preach today? Yeah. Anybody love the word of God? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Verse 16. Paul says, so I say walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, which is wild living, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, which is causing division, factions, which is stirring up political division. Just let that simmer for a second because this is an election year and I will be talking about it this year and I'm going to put everybody on notice right now that the political divide that is in our world is not welcome to come in this house. This will, has been, is, and will always be a house of unity. No matter if you vote Democrat or Republican, this house will be a house of unity. So you keep that foolishness out there. Just want to say that. Verse 21, in envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, because he said before, I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. We should take note of that. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You love this one, forbearance or patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So in this series, we're going to be looking at these nine fruit of the Spirit. And and I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, it's going to be a very challenging series. So I'm going to ease you into it with an easy one. Talk about loving and love and joy today. Love and, love and joy. So I've titled this message, if you're taking notes, write this down in the, in, in, the, in the words of Marvin Gaye. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Yeah, yeah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Come on, let's pray together. And let's also pray for another church during this time. God, we thank you so much for this day. God, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, thank you for the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for your place. Lord, thank you for allowing us to come and worship together. Thank you for the body of Christ. Lord, thank you for the individuals who have gotten baptized today, and Lord, those who are getting baptized in the next service, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And God, we just give you all the praise and all the honor. And we take a moment together like we do every Sunday, Lord, and we lift up another church to you. And today we lift up the Whit Baptist Church and Pastor Doug Brown. And I pray that you'd bless the man of God and his family. And Lord, I pray that you would do something absolutely incredible at their church today. Let lives be forever changed in that place. And I pray that you, you bless Pastor Doug and bless him physically. Lord, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially. God, his rising up, his lying down, his coming, his going. Lord, bless them today. Strengthen their church, their families. God, help them to continue to be a light in this region, Lord. And we thank you for allowing all of us to be a part of the Capital C Church around the world, God. And thank you for this place and what you want to speak into our hearts today. We open our lives to what you want to do for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say a big amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Vibe. So we're stepping into the Easter season where the church should do everything that it can to reach people with the greatest news this world has ever known. And that's the message of salvation and the resurrecting power of Jesus. You know, we're living in a very hard time 
When, when people can be skeptical of the church because of false information, causing them to believe things that aren't true, or because they've experienced some really mean church-going so-called Christians. Not in this service. Other services. So here's the first reason why this series is so important. People should not just hear about the love of Jesus in the church. They should be able to see the love of Jesus from the church. Here's another reason why this series is so important. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. So if we'll learn to live according to the fruit of the Spirit, come on, we'll be right with God and watch. No good thing will God keep from us. But I believe the problem that bl- with believers today is that we've developed what's called a Sunday morning Christianity, where we think that we can come to church on Sunday and live however we want to the rest of the week. See, I hear people say all the time, I go to church, I'm a good person, and then they live how they want to the rest of the week. The problem with that mentality is that makes them no better off than someone who has spent their week living like hell and doesn't go to church. No difference. Can I get an amen in the house today? So only going to church will do nothing for you when you stand before God one day. Pastor, are you saying I don't have to go to church? Nope. In fact, slap your neighbor and tell him don't be stupid. (laughs) For the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. I don't have time to talk about that, but when, 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 when Ephesians tells us that God, that husbands should love their wives as Christ loved the church, that word there is the ecclesia, which means the assembly. Yeah. So not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but extorting one another, and so much more as you see the day, which is the coming of the Lord, approaching. So we should come to church, get involved in church. And then apply the word of God to our lives and start being the church in the world. Because at the avenue, we believe that the local church is the hope of the world. Come on, here's an early news flash. If Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, then how you live should reflect that. Your vibe should be Jesus. The church should be different than the world. We should be noticeably different than the world. In fact, at some point in your life, somebody should say to you, there's something different about you. Going to church on Sundays and claiming to love God, but then your lifestyle completely contradicts the word of God is the definition of hypocritical. Come on, come on, Avenue. It's time that we stop acting like a church and start being one. It's time that we stop acting like a Christian and start being one. This is not a serious saying that you have to be perfect, although we should strive to live like Christ. I'm challenging us to be a people of integrity. I'm challenging us to be difference makers through our lifestyle. And when we fall short, repent, get back up, and try again. See, I believe the reason why some people want nothing to do with God and nothing to do with the church is because they've seen people who claim to be Christian behave worse than them. Y'all better talk to me, 930. Come on, Avenue. If we claim to be a Christian, then our lifestyles should be different in the world. We've got to learn to be in the world, but not of the world. And through that, together, we can change the world. Come on, high five your neighbor and tell him you need to check your vibe. You need to check your Your vibe. I hadn't even got to my first point. I'm trying to calm down a little bit. (laughs) Pastor Justin, why is it so important for me to live my life according to what Paul speaks of, according to the fruit that Paul speaks of? John chapter 15, 1 through 8. Get this. Here's the reason. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more beautiful. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, baby, you need some pruning. You need some pruning. (laughs) You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. 
Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. He's talking about hell. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I want to live my life in such a way that God says, ask me whatever you want and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So if you're taking notes, I'm splitting this message into two parts. So let's look at the first one, love. Somebody say love. Love. Love here that Paul uses is the, in the Greek word, the Greek word used here for love is the agape, the agape love. So the Bible uses four different Greek words for love. We, in, in English, we have one word, it's called love. But when they were describing love, they had actual different words for it. The agape love is, is the selfless kind of love that cares for others. It promotes what is best for others without a hidden motive of personal gain. It's an unconditional love. See, love is the greatest of all the fruit. Now check this right here. By love, it means a love for God and a love for people. Well, how do you know if you're a Christian? Well, do you love God? For that's the most important fruit, love. So two points with love. Number one, write this down. Real love for God changes the way you live in the world. Real love for God changes the way you live in the world. In the world, come on, look at your neighbor and say, ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing like the real thing. I'm going to read you a scripture in John 21, but before I do, you need to understand something about that word love. Jesus is about to use two different types of words. He's about to use the agape love. He's also going to talk about the phileo love. And so you're going to see this dialogue between Jesus and Peter. And so we read it in our text because we speak English. They just translate it into English with the word love, but it's actually two different Greek words. He says in John 21, one verse 15 when they had finished eating Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon son of John do you agape me more than these Peter says yes Lord you know that I we say love but it's actually phileo love do you agape me Peter says Lord I I phileo you the phileo love is a I love you like a brother I love you bro I love do you agape me Lord you know I phileo you jesus said feed my lambs again jesus said simon son of john do you agape me and peter answered yes lord do you know that i phileo you jesus said well take care of my sheep and then the third time he said to him simon son of john do you now watch jesus changes it he says do you phileo me and peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. He wasn't hurt because it was three times he asked. He, hurt, he was hurt because he changed it from agape to phileo. Do you, do you agape? He says, do you, do you phileo me? And Peter said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I phileo you. Well, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and, when, and went that where you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then Jesus said this to Peter, follow me. Now, Jesus is restoring Peter here because Peter had denied Jesus three times. But also we see that Peter is just being honest that he could never possibly love Jesus like Jesus loved him because Jesus gave up his life for Peter. And Jesus says, okay, if you'll at least phileo me, I'll accept that, Peter. But if you do love me, he says, follow me. In other words, it's time to quit the act, Peter, and start being the real thing. Your whole vibe has to change because I'm calling you to change the world. And if you're ever going to do that, you've got to be the real thing. See, people can go to church every week of their lives and yet never really love God. And saying that right there is offensive to some people. Well, pastor, how dare you? I love God. And I really hope you do. But see, a real love for God will lead you to change your life because of what he did for you on the cross. Come on, church. Y'all better talk to me today. See, we've got, we've got a big problem today, church. It's the Sunday morning Christianity mindset. Some people will try to see how much of the world that they can experience and still follow Jesus. Yeah, I'll follow Jesus as long as I can keep doing what I want to do. I'll follow Jesus as long as I can keep doing what I like to do. Come on, nudge your neighbor and say, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. How many of you like to go on vacation here? Anybody in? So it's funny. We go on vacation. 
We go on vacation and we think that we have to bring our entire house with us. Some of y'all bring suitcases upon suitcases. My wife will put in clothes that she's like, well, I may change my mind and wear something different when I get there. I'm like, babe, there's only so many days that we're going. And we'll pack the car and you can barely see out the back and you try to find ways to see the rear view mirror. Or maybe, maybe you're um, going through the airport and <laughs> you're throwing luggage everywhere and everybody else in your family doesn't want to help. So you're like kicking stuff and hold, you, you're looking ridiculous running through the airport, especially if you're late and you're worried about not making, making the trip. And you got all this stuff to go with you. And it looks completely ridiculous sometimes when we pack our lives full of stuff that we don't even really need. But this is exactly how we look when we say, I want to follow you, Jesus, as long as I can take all my stuff with me. I gotta, I, I wanna, I'll follow you when it's convenient for me. Can, can, we got people all around the world, churches all around the world, who say, I'll follow Jesus as long as I don't have to give up my stuff. Can I follow Jesus and still get drunk on the side? Can I follow Jesus and still treat my family like trash? Can I follow Jesus and still get high every now and then? Can I follow Jesus and still get things turned up on the weekends? Can, can I follow Jesus and still be addicted to pornography? And can I follow Jesus and still cheat on my spouse? And can I follow Jesus and still be disrespectful to my God-given parents? Can I follow Jesus on Sunday, but then at home or school or at work, can I still live like hell? Can I follow Jesus and still cuss how I want and live how I want and act how I want? And then Jesus says something in Matthew 16, 24. He says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Come on, slap your neighbor and tell him you got to change your ways. You got to change your ways. Here's the problem, Avenue. With some people are too churched to really enjoy sin, while at the same time, too sinful to really enjoy Jesus. Can I rewind it and say it again? Some people are too churched to really enjoy sin while at the same time too sinful to really enjoy Jesus. We don't want to give up anything to follow Christ, but we sure do want to demand him to bless our lives. The problem is, it's not really about a relationship for some of us. So what happens is it becomes a list of do's and don'ts. Well, in order to be a Christian, I can only do this. In order to be a Christian, I can't do that. Come on, church, that's religion. Hey, Avenue, I never signed up for that. I don't want a religion. I want a relationship because that's all that God's after. He wants to know you, and that's why he gave his son to die for you. That's why he loves you so much. And I've come to tell the Avenue, there's so much more than Sunday morning Christianity, God. God wants to open heaven over your life and bless you. Come on. There ain't nothing like the real thing. If you'll develop a relationship with God, it'll become a joy to give up things you may love for someone you love more. But until then, your whole vibe will be off. Come on. I need you to high five three people and tell them ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Until you... Until you change some stuff, your whole vibe's going to be off, and you'll be completely miserable on the inside because you haven't truly decided to follow Jesus. We all right? Why do you think Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind? Because if you love God that way, you don't have to worry about what the law says. Because it's about a relationship. Real love for God changes the way you live in the world. Now, if you really love God, you're going to allow him to move in your heart. And we should start to love other people. Number two, real love reaches all types of people. Come on, look at your neighbor with the stank eye and say, baby, that's you too. That's you too. That's you too. He's talking about you. Real love reaches all types of people. Ain't nothing like the real thing. 
John 13, 34 and 35. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Hey, church, the way we love should be different than the way the world loves. If the world doesn't love you, they'll try to cancel you. That cancel culture has no place in the body of Christ. So what does Jesus say about this? Luke chapter 6, verses 32 through 36. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and live to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Man, that's a tough scripture. You mean even after they run my name through social media, I got to be nice to them? No, what I should do is get online and say something back. I'll show them. Yeah, that's real Christian. It, it, takes a, it takes a bigger man, a bigger woman to turn the other cheek and keep loving God and loving people no matter what's said. If we don't love one another, what are, if we don't love others, what are other people picking up about the church? The world will know that we are followers of Jesus by what? How we love one another. And if that's the case, then why are there so many Christians and churches fighting so much against each other? Galatians chapter 5, 13 through 15 says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you'll be destroyed by each other. Hey, church, we should love other Christians. Amen. Shocker. And we should love other churches. Shocker. The problem is we've got too many so-called Christians in churches more upset about how many people are going to other churches than they are about people going to hell. Is this the red light? This is the red light, right? Online. Hey, pastor. Hey, church leader. Stop worrying about who has more people in their building. Stop worrying about who has more money in their church. Stop worrying about who has the better program. If we'd all hit our knees and pray for each other and pray for lost people together, we can come together and make a bigger difference. Come on. Somebody shout a big amen right there. Come on. We are stronger together. And another thing. Not only should we love other Christians and other churches, but watch, we should really love sinners because Jesus loves sinful people. In fact, he was criticized many times in the Bible for hanging out with drunks and prostitutes and thieves and robbers. I mean, he even died with two of them. Real love reaches all types of people. Jesus loved sinners not because he was okay with their sin and not because he ignored their sin. He loved the sinner because he knew that they were simply searching for something to fulfill the longing in their heart for happiness. And he had the solution. He was the solution. And I've come to tell somebody that Jesus Christ is still the solution. He loves sinners. How do I know? He loves you, doesn't he? He loves me, doesn't he? I'm simply a sinner on the receiving end of God's amazing grace. Grace, oh, come on, somebody help me preach today. At the avenue, we really love sinners. Why? Because we have the solution to what the world is looking for. And his name is Jesus. 
Woo! Oh, if you're one of those perfect Christians who merely act the part on Sunday and you're more concerned about how you look on the outside than you do the inside, I pray that next Sunday on this same time next week that the most scandalous person with a jacked up past comes and sits down right next to you. News flash at the avenue. Everyone is welcome. They may walk up in here jacked up, but Jesus Christ is going to set them free. They may walk up in here high, but they're going to leave with a buzz off the Holy Ghost. They may walk up in here with alcohol still on their breath, but God's going to sober them up and set them free for it's only Jesus who can wash away every stain. It's only Jesus who can take a sinner like you and a sinner like me and save them and redeem them and restore them and bless them and then use them. Oh, I wish I could find a house full of people who's thankful that Jesus loved you in the middle of your mess. Now would be a good time for about a 15 second praise break because you're thankful for the love of Jesus. Woo! Come on, I need you to get up out of your seat, find seven people, high five them and tell them you belong right here, baby. You belong right here. Here, you belong right here, right here, right here. Come on online, talk to me. You belong right here. Come on, y'all help me know our online campus belongs right here. Come on, make some noise for our online campus today. Woo! I got a question. It's rhetorical. Don't answer it out loud. I got a question. What kind of perspective do you have towards people? Well, Pastor Justin, this generation is the most godless generation that we've ever seen. True. But there's never been a greater opportunity to show the love of Jesus than in 2024. I'll hear people say to me, man, people here need Jesus. And I say, isn't it great? Because the harvest is ready. But maybe if you're one of part of those, one of those uh, frozen churches, those few frozen, chosen, chosen, frozen, holy huddle churches, maybe you don't want any more lost people in the area because they may come to your church. Y'all know these churches? Oh, they want people to get saved. Just go to a different church. <laughs> Glad you got saved in our altars. Bye. I, it's my fault. I'm confessing. I pray all the time. God, send this area more sinners. Send the lost, the wretched, jacked up, messed up. Send more lost people to the Lakeway area and surrounding regions. Because if no other church wants them, baby, we do. We cannot afford any more Christians who just want to act cute and go home. The church needs Christians who possess a perspective of faith that says everybody here needs Jesus. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling preachy. I'm feeling preachy. Young people, you should walk your hallways and see all the filth and say this is a great opportunity because everybody here needs Jesus. You should walk your job and your family and say this is a great opportunity because everybody here needs Jesus. I should walk this city and look at this region and praise God for lost people because it's a great opportunity to empty the pit of hell and populate heaven because everybody here needs Jesus. Jesus, I need you to tell your whole zip code right now. Everybody here needs Jesus. Woo! Make sure your whole row knows. Everybody here needs Jesus. Come on, somebody give God a big shout of praise. Are we okay? That's love. Love God. Love people. If you say you don't love people, I question your love for God. Don't tell me you can love God and you don't love people. There's a good Greek word for that. It's spelled B-O-L-O-G-N-A. Baloney. That's the message version. Some of y'all don't know your Bible. It's in there, I promise. Are we okay? 
10.38, I got 22 minutes. I'm doing good. Let's move on to second fruit. So we're going to love God and love people. Hey, hey we're going to be in Galatians 5 all, all month until we get to Easter. Easter, we start a new series called Revive. So if I were you, I'd take this word home, and I'd look at the nine fruit and say, okay, Lord, what do you got for me this month? How do I need to change my vibe? You know, some people will come to Christ because of who they see in you. And some people don't want anything to do with Christ because of what they see in you. Well, second fruit. Somebody shout joy. joy. I, I'm, I'm almost done, by the way. That, that was the bulk of it today. I told you I was going to ease you into this thing, and I'll lower the hammer later on. <laughs> joy, joy. The Greek word used here for joy is kara. It's a strong inner sense of gladness that is not based on circumstances. My, can we get a hold of this, please? Please, God help us. It's based on the love, grace, blessings, and promises of God that belong to those who follow Christ. In other words, if you're only happy when good things happen, then that's shallow and you don't have real joy. God has promised you joy. Kara joy. Yeah, but pastor, if you knew what I was dealing with, you might not be happy about it. You're right. I might not be happy about something happening, but I can still have joy. There, there's, there's a difference. You want to know why I can walk up in here Sunday after Sunday, Monday after Monday, Tuesday after Tuesday, every day of the week, and I can still be the same person in the middle of chaos going on? It's not because, oh, you're faking it. You're, no, no, I've got real joy. And I'm not going to let my life be swayed just by circumstances that may happen in my life. When I was, when I was in Cincinnati, I had, I had shoulder surgery because I tore my labrum. Because I was lifting like 500 pounds and I, you know, it just... <laughs> Shut up. Actually, I was holding a Christmas tree up and... <laughs> so I tore, my, I tore my labrum front and back and... Um, the, the day of surgery, I, I go and they give me, they give me a, a, a T-shirt. I love T-shirts. I'm a, I'm a T-shirt fanatic. In fact, last night I was spotted. Somebody spotted me and outed me. I was at Bucky's last night. And so, um, and they posted it on, on, on social media. So, so um, I, 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 with my family at, at Bucky's, there's a bunch of us that went and, um, See, Ryan's a man after my own heart. Like, he got here, he's like, I want to go to Bucky's. I'm like, I knew you were a man of God. I knew it. Won't he do it? And so, I was excited to go because I'd spotted one of those. They had a t-shirt out that had the, the eagle on it, and it had, had Bucky's on it, and it had, like, places, like a, a rock concert type, type t-shirt. And I went last night, and they had my size. I was like, man. But anyways, I love t-shirts. Melissa's glad they didn't have my size because she hates all my t-shirts. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to get surgery, and they give me a T-shirt to put on. I'm like, sweet, I got me a, I got me a surgery T-shirt. And um, they, they give you, they, before they give you the anesthesia, they, they give you like this happy juice that kind of just relaxes you. And they put me in a room, and I'm watching Sports Center, and I was in the dark, and they're like, they're just, every few minutes, they're you okay? And I'm like, man, I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> And they wheel me back in there. It's time for surgery. And, and I, like I, I remember I tell myself, I'm, I'm counting down from 10. And by golly, I'm getting past 7 this time. I'm getting past 7. It's the weirdest thing. You try like so hard, like, 2. <laughs> and so I get, to, I get to 10. I'm laying there. She goes, okay. I told her, I said, I'm getting past 7. She's like, okay. And so I'm, I'm laying there. And um, I have my T-shirt on. And I go, 10. They put the anesthesia in. 10, 9. And by, I got to 8. I got to 8. I looked down. And she took scissors, and I washed her. She cut all, shh, all the way up my shirt. And I remember thinking, no! And she cut it. And I got to seven, boom, gone. I was gone. Last thing I remember is she cut my T-shirt. And so I, 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 next thing I knew, I was in the car going home. And I looked down my lap, and I had like five or six T-shirts in my lap. And I'm like, hey, babe, why, why do I have so many T-shirts in my lap? And she says, because you're an idiot. <laughs> she calls that her love, her, what do you call it, words of endearment or whatever? That's just her way of calling me bad names. And so she's like, because you're an idiot. I'm like, well, what happened? She said, when you came out of surgery, they wheeled you places. And everywhere you went, you were upset because you kept telling them, they cut my T-shirt. Well, people kept handing me T-shirts. So I went home with like five or six T-shirts. It was awesome. 
Why are you telling us a story about anesthesia? I'm, I'm telling you that to say this. All of the world's solutions to help you find joy will always wear off. Which leads me to this, number one of joy, write this down. Knowing Jesus produces real joy. Knowing Jesus produces real joy. Having Jesus in your life gives you real joy. And there should be something different about you. Like when you leave the day, and if you go to a restaurant, the host and the waitress and the waiter, they should want to have your table. Because there's something different about you. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that having joy is going to make you walk around and like laugh uncontrollably all the time and you be weird and goofy. Like I know those people, you're like... I, I'm saying until you get a hold of real joy, you'll continue to walk around unfulfilled and just acting like you're happy. How are you? I'm great. Leave me alone. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Come on, Avenue. Knowing Jesus is the sole reason why you can have real joy in the middle of the worst situations. And what you need are some positive people in your life who are full of joy to help you out. In fact, I need you to touch your neighbor and say, baby, you need me. You need me. Because in the midst of the most difficult times, they know that God will eventually work it all out. Why? Because they have real joy. Real joy is knowing. I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know when God's going to do it. I just know that he's going to work it all out. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose come on somebody shout all things you can have real joy because you know Jesus and if you know Jesus then you know that he knows how to work it all out I don't know how God's going to save my family I just know that he will I don't know when I'll get that job I just know that God's got this I don't know how God's going to take this and work out my problem I just know that God's in control I just simply know that God knows what he's doing and he's going to work it all out because until you get a hold of this you'll continue to walk around acting like everything is fine but on the inside, you're completely miserable. Well, pastor, are you saying that I'm supposed to fake it? No, I'm telling you to get a hold of the truth and learn to trust in God because joy will come when you put your trust in God. Woo! I need you to look down your whole row and say there's joy in Jesus. There's joy in Jesus. Come on, stand with me. Stand with me. There's joy in Jesus. You, you know, the fruit that comes from the Avenue Church should just like be bountiful. Like pe people should start walking up to you and go, you go to the Avenue, don't you? What, what gave it away? Well, you love all kinds of people. You don't judge people. And you're always full of joy. I don't know what other churches are going to preach to you, but there should be something different about Christians. If you call yourself a Christian, ain't nothing different about you than somebody in the world. I question, I question whether you're a Christian. Maybe you're too busy following yourself instead of following Jesus. Because if you truly follow Jesus, Jesus will change you. It, it'll just start like oozing from you and, and you'll find you'll start finding people like coming up to you in the most inopportune times and just say hey can I talk to you for a second yeah. Yeah. if you follow truly follow Jesus get ready for your whole life to be inconvenienced yeah. 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 They'll, they'll come up to you at the restaurant They'll sit down beside you at the ball game. They'll stop you outside the courthouse. Hey, can I talk to you a second? Well, yeah, what's up? Why, why me? I just, I just knew there was something. I, I, I just knew I could talk to you about it. Now, you know my prayer for you is? 
I mean this. My, my prayer for you is that you become so attractive to lost people. I, I, my prayer for every person at the Avenue Church is that you, you become a lost person magnet. My, my prayer is that the anointing of God will flow so strong from you that you won't have to even stand on a street corner, but they'll start coming up to you and saying, hey, I need to get saved, and I don't know what to do. Y'all think I'm crazy, but every hair on my head is standing up right now. Mm. Literally and spiritually. <laughs> Come on, if, if you want that kind of... Mm. If, if you want that kind of love flowing from your life and joy coming from your life, that people at your work, in your family, at school, out in the community are just attracted to what God is doing in your life, if, if that's your heart's desire, will you just lift that hand up all over this house? Come on, Avenue. Yeah. God, you, you see our hands right now. And Lord, you know our hearts. God, we, we don't want to make a name for ourselves. We want to lead people to you, Lord. We want to lead people to the greatest experience that we've ever experienced. And that's a relationship with you, Jesus. So God, I pray right now, every person that has their hand lifted, I ask that you would give them a fresh touch of your anointing. Lord, I pray for a supernatural, soul-winning anointing. Mm. God, the, the same soul-winning anointing that's hit my life, and that's on this house. God, let that same soul-winning anointing hit every person in this moment right now in the name of Jesus. God, we receive it today because it's your anointing that changes everything. It's your anointing that changes everything, everything, everything. Ah, can I do something right here and give you point two in just a second? So you, think, you got another point? Yeah, I got another point. But it's closing. Don't worry about it. Mm. You, ever, you ever just know moments when the Holy Spirit just kind of walks in the room? The Lord, the Lord has just kind of walked in the room right now. Yeah. Mm. And, there, and there's some people here, and there's some people online. You, you don't have real joy because you don't have a real relationship with God. And you don't, you, you're, you're not experiencing real love because you're looking for love in all the wrong places. It's, it's not going to come from the opposite sex. It's not going to come from a group of friends. It's not going to come by being popular. It's not going to come from all these things in the world. There's one place that you'll discover real love, and it's Jesus. It's Jesus. And, and some of you, hold on, some of you, you've never experienced that before, ever. You've never had a relationship with God. You, you've known religion, but you've never had a relationship. And, and then still yet, there's some of you in here, there's some of you in here that you've known the love of God, and, and for whatever reasons, through life circumstances, you've drifted away from the love of God, not because he lost you, but because you stepped away. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God. But sin will take us from the presence of God. And some of us have drifted away from God because of our choices. And in this moment right here, before we wrap this thing up, I just feel led to do this right now. Mm. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Lord. You need to know that God loves you with an agape love, an unconditional love, that there's nothing you could have done, no matter how many times you've done it, no matter where you've been, no matter who you've done it with, like there's no sin greater than the love of God. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving, no one leaving, just our prayer team moving around with me right now. If you're here today, or online with us, and you would be honest with yourself, honest with me, and honest with God, and you'd say, I want to experience the real love of God. I don't have a relationship with the Lord. I've never known the Lord. Or maybe, maybe, maybe I, you've walked away from God, and you're saying, Lord, I need to reconnect with you. I need, I need to recommit my life to you today, Lord. Come on, there's, there's nothing like the real thing, church. Nothing. The love of God will change your life. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed, from the front to back, side to side, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Justin, pray that with me. I need God in my life. I need the love of God in my life. 
I'm going to count to three. If that's you, just right there where you're standing, I want to pray with you. Just right there where you're standing. So with every head bowed, when I get to three, just lift that hand just so I know who I'm praying with. No one else looking around, just, just so I know. One. Come on, somebody's life is about to change. Two. Come on, if you, if you want life and not death, you want heaven, not hell. Come on, three. Lift that hand up. Yeah, I see you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I see you back there. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. No one looking around. No one looking around. Maybe somebody online. Let our online team know right now. Come on, those of you who lifted that hand, I want you to pray this with me from your heart and from your mouth. I want you to say, God, I need you. I'm lost without you. Thank you for loving me. I want to experience that love. So today, I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins. And from this day forward, no matter what happens, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you. Because you are my joy. You do love me. And you're my salvation. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout a big amen right there. Come on, Avenue. Somebody give God a big praise in the house. Can can I I finish this real quick? I got five minutes. You're staying in. You're all right. Second thing, write it down. And ain't God good? Come on, he's so good. Am I thankful for the love of God? Come on, the joy of the Lord. That people's lives are being changed. Come on, Avenue, somebody give God a big praise. So, so here, let me, let me give you this last one. Real joy is the result of a right choice. You got a choice to make. Psalm 118, 24 says, this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice we will rejoice and be glad in it you should never look at this verse the same again let me tell you why you've got to understand this scholars believe that this is the psalm that Jesus and his disciples would have sang together look it up in your scripture they sang together at the last supper when Jesus is telling them that he's about to be killed I'm about to be crucified go through the worst thing that you can imagine this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad. <laughs> well, Pastor, how is there joy in that? Because Jesus knew the outcome. So therefore, real joy is a choice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Here at the avenue, we choose joy. You've got to make a choice. Make the right choice. What's having a sorry attitude going to help you do? Nothing. This makes it worse. And the people around you miserable. So come on, Avenue, stop walking around looking like you've been sucking on lemons. And, and Christians can be the worst at this. Come on, you, you, what you need to do is stop giving off the wrong vibe. Any, any, any Winnie the Pooh fans in here? Don't be an Eeyore. But y'all know Tigger. Tigger comes bouncing around. The wonderful thing about Tigger, Tigger's a wonderful thing. <laughs> he bouncy, 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 bouncy. And, and they always say, hey, Tigger, can you do this? And then what's his response? Sure. That's what Tiggers do best. And anytime he comes around, he immediately changed the atmosphere for good. And that's, and that's how we should be. Come on, Avenue. Because of the eternal, real joy that we have, we should walk into a room and change the atmosphere. I don't believe there used to be some kind of fruitcake weirdo, but I'm saying people should look forward to seeing you come instead of praying that you'll just walk away. The fruit of the Spirit should be evident in our lives because real love changes the world. Real joy changes your perspective. Real love reaches all types of people, and real joy helps you walk through the most difficult times. Here's the big idea. When you experience the real love of God, you have access to a joy that will forever change your life and the lives of those around you. Ain't nothing like the real thing, babe. May the vibe of the Avenue Church always be love and joy. 
If this message spoke to you today and you took your next step of making a decision to know Christ, we want to celebrate with you and walk this out with you. Simply click the link in the comments below and a pastor will reach out to you and celebrate the greatest decision you have ever made. At The Avenue, we know that we're stronger together, everyone matters, and you belong here.